Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now, a while back, I asked you all what the best tagline was for any of the Jurassic Park movies. And it looks like Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom's Life Finds a Way tease is the winner by a really large margin. While I think this is an awesome tagline, I honestly have a lot more nostalgia and interest in the promotional lines for the first two movies, especially Something Has Survived. That being said, I think the most effective one we've had is actually for Jurassic World. The Park is Open was such a perfect tag to put on the posters and promotional material for the fourth movie, and to say it worked would be an understatement. With that being said, I'd like to know what all of your favorite Jurassic Park quotes are in the series. There are quite a few of them, so I'm sure many people will have different picks as to which one they feel is the best. Now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and begin. Even though the Ceratosaurus was only featured for one brief scene in Jurassic Park 3, its history as well as fan popularity goes far beyond that of the third film. In fact, the Ceratosaurus was a part of the toy line and other collectible merchandise way back at the beginning of the film franchise in 1993. The first time Jurassic Park would get its own Ceratosaurus would be in the die-cast Jurassic Park line, which came complete with a metal action figure and a specific card to go alongside it. It's important to note that the overall design and color scheme of this animal is eerily similar to the one that we would eventually get to see within the film canon. Now unfortunately, Ceratosaurus would have a cancelled second appearance within the series Chaos Effect toy line, after the company decided that its features would better suit one of their hybrids, namely the Paradinonychus. This short time out of the limelight would soon pass though, when the dinosaur finally made its official debut on the big screen in 2001, with the release of Jurassic Park 3. The Ceratosaurus featured within this film is only seen for a few seconds and doesn't really do much in the grand scheme of things. However, the animal seems to have made a pretty noteworthy impact on the fandom as a whole, with many people citing the odd medium-sized carnivore as being one of their favorite new additions from JP3. Ceratosaurus would later become a dinosaur that was heavily featured in several video games, including the Game Boy Advance Jurassic Park Builder, Operation Genesis, the mobile app Jurassic Park Builder, and of course Jurassic World the game. The animal wouldn't be featured in the fourth film in the series, yet did manage to find its way in Jurassic World's toy line, sporting the same design it had seen in its older incarnations. Now, the animal is set to make its return to the series in two confirmed mediums for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, one of which is a new toy, and the other is an appearance in Jurassic World Evolution. Being a part of the series for practically its entire existence, the Ceratosaurus happens to be a fan-favorite dinosaur within the community. Unfortunately, we never really got too much information on it. We'd only seen it for a short period of time in JP3, so there really wasn't too much to go on for many years after its initial introduction. However, all of that has since changed in the past few months, after the Dinosaur Protection Group managed to release some very interesting information on this elusive theropod. We now know that Ceratosaurus was never planned for Jurassic Park. Out of all of the carnivores that were eventually bred and left abandoned on Site B, this species is said to not be one of them. InGen doesn't even have the animal's DNA listed as being mined in any capacity back in 1997, meaning that the creature was of course not planned to be an upcoming attraction for the Nublar Resort. However, it seems that after Mazrani Global's acquisition of John Hammond's InGen, some illegal genetic work was carried out on the island by a group of mysterious individuals. These scientists began work on the creation of four new species, or four so far that we're currently aware of anyway. Two of these were holdovers from the days of Jurassic Park, with both Corythosaurus and Ankylosaurus being nearly completed and ready for park use soon, with their DNA sequencing being at 97 and 91 percent respectively. Both the Ceratosaurus and the Spinosaurus are believed to be entirely constructed after the Mizrani buyout, and as such, little is really known of their unique histories on the island. Many of you will probably note that the Ceratosaurus that was featured in Jurassic Park 3 is quite larger to what the actual animal was. This isn't exactly uncommon in Jurassic Park's dinosaurs, but it may come as a surprise to some of you that one of the reasons it may have been so much bigger is actually because the final shooting script for Jurassic Park 3 called for a Carnotaurus to approach Grant and the others at the riverside. Ceratosaurus was later picked by the filmmakers for reasons that many suggest could have something to do with Disney's dinosaur using the Carno just a year prior. Now, it's quite possible that Ceratosaurus could have been a part of what the DPG is called the Amalgam Testing. 
some sort of bizarre genetic experimentation that apparently involves a mixture or blend of different attributes. Whatever the case may be, the animal was undoubtedly tested on for nine months before its eventual release and abandonment was carried out by its creators. Any surviving members of its species would later be hunted for and brought to Isla Nublar to be made park attractions for Jurassic World. Alright guys, now that is the official history of this dinosaur within the entire franchise. Hopefully some of you learned something new, or at least had fun with this documentation. Now, at the beginning of this video, you may have been confused by the weird text on Nedry's screen. Well, I'm letting you all know right now that this is a riddle. In many of my videos for the past few months, I've left several small easter eggs in preparation for the right moment to do this, and now feels like the perfect time. If you can decipher and answer the riddle at the beginning of this video, you'll go down the rabbit hole and have completed the first part of this three-part egg hunt. The first one to find the third and final egg will be crowned the winner and given the spotlight for a future video. Honestly guys, I'm really excited to start this and hope you all have fun searching for the answers. Good luck and happy hunting. Now before I go, I want to thank my game wardens, as well as my engine executives. I'd also like to thank my park workers and engine hunters as well. I can't thank you enough for all of the support you guys give me, and it seriously means the world to have all of you appreciate what I do so much. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.